Um, well, a very, very warm welcome to you on uh, this Friday afternoon for us. And I know we normally, um, I normally tell you about the flavour tea that I'm drinking, but in honour of Charlie's presence, I have <laughs> a little, a little glass of, of um, Glenrothes whiskey, no less. So um, well, uh, just, I'm, uh, I'm joining you with cold, cold tea as well. Uh, <laughs> that's that's wonderful. So we are really excited this afternoon to be joined by um, Vicky and Charlie, um, who are going to take us on a fabulous little tour north of the border. Um, as you all know, we are absolutely passionate about the English countryside and, um, and everything that's in it. And Vicky and Charlie feel exactly the same way about everything that is up there um, in, in Scotland. So, this is the first of um, two episodes that we're going to be talking about um, Scotland. And this first one, um, talking very much about um, whiskey and distillery experiences and so on, which is um, why Charlie is, is with us. And in the next episode, we're going to focus more on, on the country pursuits and the fabulous castles and, um, and so on uh, up north. So uh, we're going to have, a, um, have a, lot of, a lot of fun exploring, exploring Scotland. Um, now, I have to introduce um, uh, Charlie and give you a little bit of, of background. He was described by the Times as Scotland's leading whisky expert. Now, Scotland probably per capita has more whiskey, so, clear, so claimed whiskey experts um, than, than you can imagine. So to be acclaimed by the Times as Scotland's leading whiskey expert um, says a huge amount. He has just finished his, finished his 18th book all about whiskey. And the plaudits um, of his, his books, which include Wikipedia and the Essential Pocket Guide and, and so on, everybody shouts volumes um, that they are, if, if you're a whiskey lover, if you're interested in the history of whiskey, then you have to have a few of Charlie's books in your collection to really know what, um, what, what you're talking about. As always, we'd love to hear your questions and so on. So please do put them in the um, in the chat, and uh, we'll, Charlie will either answer them as we're going along or or towards the end. But um, just while I'm starting to share share the slides, um, a huge warm welcome both Vicky and Charlie. And Charlie, can you just share with us a little bit about how you got into this wonderful world of of whiskey to start off with? Well, the simple answer is by accident. The, uh, I, I spent most of the 1970s trying to make up my mind. Hello, you've gone. Yeah, oh, it's all right. I'm just trying to it all right. Absolutely. Trying to yes. make up my mind, as one did in those days, what on earth I was going to do. I did a degree in art history, and then I did, did a degree in law. I qualified as, a, as, a, as a, an attorney. Um, and uh, and wh while I was doing my qualification, I knew that the law was not for me. Um, so I set up my plate as a literary agent. I always aspired to be a writer. And this was a way into coming to understand about, uh, about writing. Uh, promptly starved. Um, uh, so in parallel with that, started writing commercial copy uh, as a freelance copywriter. And, um, and, and also originally ghostwriting, actually, helping other people to write books and, and so on. Literary agents obviously act as the the interface between publishers and authors and um, ghost writers are people who have a good story but can't write and so they I was being employed to do that um, and the salvation was um, around about 1980 when um, I began to work freelance as a copywriter now the relation to, to whiskey of this story is that the um, in 1981 I was approached by a design agency to write a brochure for a whiskey company, uh, which was Bell's, as a matter of fact, but that's relevant. But as it happened, during the 80s, I did a lot of work for commercial work, for um, annual reports, corporate brochures, adverts, this sort of thing, um, packaging for various whiskey brands and companies. Um, such that by 1988, when I didn't have, I used to like to have a book on the back burner to turn to when, um, uh, when I didn't have commercial work going. Um, 
so by 1988, I had, I had sufficient interest and sufficient track record to make a fist of a proposal to a publisher uh, for a book about Scotch whiskey. That was published in 92. And um, actually, you're very up to date because I finished my 18th book on Monday. I mean, two, two days ago, three <laughs> days ago, you know. Um, <laughs> Oh, well, it's, and it's, it's not finished, so I've still got to go through the entire text. But the, uh, yeah, I've done, I've written now 18 books about Scotch, um, big books. And I mean, during this lockdown period, I've written another three books. Um, well, one was, a, was a, an, an update of an earlier book, which is being published in America, as a matter of fact, as a, uh, an e-book. Um, and the other two are small, smaller books to accompany eye-wateringly expensive bottle, bottles of, uh, of whiskey. So that's my... So it was accidental, but the, you know, I have no regrets abandoning the law and uh, getting involved in this wonderful industry and this wonderful product. And um, now, you know, I travel a great deal. Well, obviously not. Who knows what the new, the new normality will be, the new reality. But last year, for example, I was uh, 23 times abroad in 17 countries. Um, talking about scotch, doing tastings, this sort of thing. And that's been the pattern for the last, I would say, since, probably since about 2000. The, a lot of travel and a lot of um, talking about whiskey. But now, how, how so wonderful, it, how wonderful. I consider myself really to be a, light, a writer. And so it's really been, it's been bliss having peace <laughs> and quiet just to write, you know. <laughs> but, and you've got was, a, few, a few of those journals behind you as, as well. Well, I've written, I've written all these books. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that, they, this is my, these are all whiskey books. These are, they, they, it's, it's probably the largest library of whiskey books in the world. Um, Good the, Lord. The, 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 this is my source material. I, I borrow information from other people, you see, and cobble it together. The, uh, Super. Well, imitation is the best form of flattery, isn't it? To get, to get all that, that information from. And Charlie, I mean, many, many people aspire to be um, a keeper of the quake. And this is something that I've been, been learning about. But um, I mean, you achieved that in the early 90s. But then yeah. to be elected as a master must have been quite incredible. I mean, a, a fabulous recognition of your contribution and knowledge to the industry. Well, thank you, Sam. The, yeah, nobody knows how you get... You, to become a keeper, you have to have done 10 years. I think it's now seven years, but it was 10 years. I, I was elected keeper in 92, um, and you had to have done 10 years good, good service for Scotch whiskey in Scotland. Um, this is a very, it's a very exclusive club. It's quite a large club now, but it's a very exclusive club. Um, run by the industry, sponsored by the, the, the leading Scotch whiskey companies. And Elevation to Master, um, I can't remember when I was made a master. Uh, nine, 19, uh, sorry, 2005, I think. 2005, gosh, how time flies. But then that, that and that's a sort of, ele ele and you have to have done, you know, 20 years or so of uh, good service to, to be eligible to become a master. Not, not all, um, are called to become masters. So I'm, I'm, but in relation to your, to your uh, American friends. Oh yes, this is fabulous. A distinction that, that they may recognize is the James Beard Award. Now the, the James Beard Award, um, of course, is the highest award for food and booze in the US. Um, and of course it runs in all sorts of categories, chef of the year, restaurant of the year, small restaurant of the year, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this one um, is from 2005, and it is for the best book, Wine and Spirits of the Year 2005. And, the, and it was the first time ever that a spirits book had won the James Beard Awards. And so I, I'm immensely proud of it. That's why I, I thought I would show it to you. I bet you are that well, and, and well deserved. Yeah, That's... <laughs> <laughs> Superb. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's wonderful. So if we go on and, and uh, have a bit of a chat about your um, about the tastings and, and so on. I remember um, my first real sort of introduction to whiskey. A, a friend of mine worked for Glen Morangy and we were in Edinburgh and it was a, a horrible, horrible day. It was throwing it down with rain outside. And he said he took me to um, a, a lovely pub and he lined up five different whiskies. And if I, I'm honest, back then, I, um, I was probably in my late 20s, I guess, 
um, I thought they all tasted the same. Um, and he very carefully explained to me the, 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 the different flavors and how those, some of those flavors were, um, were created and so on. So I'd love to hear um, how you approach a, a tasting, please, and what, what our, our, our American clients will, will experience. Well, first of all, I think your friend did exactly the right thing. I'm, as you can imagine, I'm often asked, you know, um, I know nothing about whiskey uh, remotely. You know, sort of the, how, how do I get to find out? I can't afford to go and buy loads of bottles. I might not like them, you know. Mm. And I always say, go into a bar well stocked with whiskey with a knowledgeable bartender um, with a couple of mates, you know, yeah. and ask the, the bartender to give you, let's say, well, say there are four of you, say three mates and yourself, four distinctly different whiskies in appropriate glasses. These are, these are called spirits. Look, that's like a, the one I've got in my hand. Um, a, a spirits nosing glass, which is just, it's just a glass, a white wine glass does, but where the, the rim narrows so as to, to direct the aroma up your nose, because a lot of the evaluation assessment is done with the nose. So four different whiskies, really different whiskies. They could be different from different countries um, or from different parts of Scotland, whatever. Um, uh, then, and large measures, because then you, you, you share and share, nose, taste, discuss, decide which one you're most interested in between the four of you, uh, and then go back to the bartender and say, um, could we have four more in that style, let's say a smoky style, you know, and yeah. he comes up with four different ones, which are all, all slightly smoky or slightly sherry style or slightly, you know, whatever or lowland whiskies, highland whiskies, speyside whiskies, whatever, just how, depending. And that way, it's not, it's the, 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 the journey of discovery is the, it's the journey that's the important thing. The, you never reach the end of it. And there is no, there is no ultimately perfect whiskey. Um, it's, it's, like, it's like wine. The wines are so different. Do you know, there's, there's no, nobody would, in their right mind would have, one wine that they, 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 they drank, none other than that wine. Um, yeah. uh, so it's the exp exploration and the realization, this is key, that they are actually different. Now, the, and they each are sometimes subtly different, sometimes extraordinarily different, you know? And, the, mm -hmm. and this, is, this is all to do with appreciation. Now, when I'm doing the, um, well, you, on the screen here, I don't know if you, you're, you're friends can see it, the, um, um, the tastings that I do, well, first of all, are tailored to the knowledge and interest. What, what, what do they want to know about? Um, I will usually look at between, well, maximum six um, whiskies, four to six whiskies, which will demonstrate, for, to, 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 and, and I'll take them through how you go about it, you know, no, look, nose, sm, um, you know, smell before you taste. Add a little water, very important. Don't, don't add ice, very important, because that closes down the aroma. Um, uh, nose and taste again, and so on. Um, so that's, that, 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 that's the basics. But the, the, what I'm trying to do, it, by and large, is to, to enlarge people's enjoyment. That's what it's about, to, yeah. to appreciation and enjoyment. You should, you should for, for pure enjoyment, I always say, drink it as you like. You know, I know in the in the states, it's usually it's often with rocks, it's often with 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 so with soda or with um, uh, Coca Cola. Great ginger ale, very good. At for enjoyment, but not for appreciation. Not for appreciation. No ice, for example, for appreciation because it closes down the aroma. Um, fully immersive. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but it is, it's all personalized for, to, the, to the, 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 the groups that, that come to me. Um, so the wonderful thing is, even if um, somebody is um, a bit of a, a major fan and has tried lots of whiskies, there's, there's always something new to learn, isn't there? Well, 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 well and I'm learning all the time as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, well, if you are, then. <laughs> well, I've tra I've trained up. I mean, quite apart from just private, you know, tastings and things. Um, gosh, I haven't. I haven't even. I've tried. I've trained up 
uh, numerous people who are now brand ambassadors for various whiskey companies. I mean, the, the, the companies pull me in to, to, to do this sort of thing, to train up their ambassadors. Um, so I've been doing it for so long, <laughs> but the, you know, I'm, quite, I'm quite good at it, I can assure you. Well, I, yes, yes, we certainly, we, we, we know that, which um, leads us on to your whiskey wheel, um, which uh, is, is just, just wonderful. So can you um, just explain a little bit more about... Um, well, I'd be delighted to, because the... I did a formal training in 1992, actually, in the, the glorious, there was a flower growing across the screen. The, um, um, a, a wonderful course at, at Harriet Watt University, short, a short course, called the, the um, what was it called? The Sensory Evaluation of Potable Spirits. Right. And it changed my life. It changed my life altogether. And the, uh, it was all to do with how you evaluate, how in the trade. This was, there were only six of us on this course. All of the, all of the others worked in various whiskey companies. And, um, and it was, you know, it was, it was absolutely invaluable. It really was. So the, the and two of those, the, 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 my tutors, there were only three tutors, but two of them had put together, they'd been tasked with the, it was run by a thing called what's now called the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute, um, attached to Heriot Watt University. And two of the tutors had worked, they'd been tasked by the industry in the late 70s to come up with a common language for describing particularly aroma. Taste is quite easy to describe, well, relatively speaking, compared to aroma. Um, and they came up with the device of a wheel which was later copied and used for wine, coffee, tea, you know, uh, cider, beer, etc. Um, and the way it works is that there are, so th this is my own wheel, which I, d I developed out of that. Um, th their wheel was much more complicated, but th this is more a consumer's wheel. But the, so you've got, you've got various segments, cereal, floral, fruity, peaty, woody, etc. There are, there are, eight in this in, in 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 my wheel you see it on the out, on the outside of the ring here um and then there are various um in the second tier the the inner wheel if you're if you can see it you see cereal breaks down into pure cereal and then malt um let's look at pt pt comes under maritime which isn't really really pt but i put it in there uh, medicinal and smoky and then on the outer rim, as it were, you've got the, 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 the delicate differences between one sort of smoke or another, one sort of medicine or another. So it's a useful tool to, um, the, 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 none of these terms are set in stone. They're, none of them are set in stone. And so the, the, but it's a useful tool. When I'm looking at a whiskey, for to, uh, analyzing a whiskey, I will run through, am I getting any cereal notes? Am I getting any floral notes? Am I getting any... Um, fruity notes, etc., um, and then and then you, if you want to go further, you can say what what's the intensity of these these aromas and so on, and then oh, okay. in the mouth, it's, it's 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 the similar sort of thing. What am I tasting? You know, whereabouts in the palate, what parts are being stimulated? You know, sweetness towards the tip of the tongue, acidity, saltiness, sides of the tongue, um, sourness uh, as as you swallow. Um, Smokiness also as you swallow, but that's not a primary taste. There's only there's only five primary tastes. Um, yeah. So that's that's the that, that that's the idea. So that's how I spend my, when I'm not writing. That's how I spend my day with, look, an, analyzing. You see, look what I've got here. These are these are current ones that I'm looking at. This is a a Cappadonic nine, 19, 1979 Cappadonic. That is that, it's got. It's wow. Cool. Can you see it? It's upside down. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely. Know, the, 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 these are just sort of current, current, current jobs to write tasting notes for for the brand owners, for for the the, uh, the people that own the casks, and they, they they call upon me to write these notes. So this is what I do. Uh, I write. I start the day very early. I write until about eleven, 
and if I've got tastings to do, um, and, 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 and analytical tastings, then, then I'll do it between, between uh, 11 and say one. Um, but I can really only look at two. Your palate get, if you're really concentrating, your palate can only cope with, um, with about two. It depends, but, but it depends on the whiskies. But the, um, um, so there we are, that's my, that, that's my da daily work. Well, I'm not sounds, working sounds like a good job to me, I think. <laughs> it's not the worst, I can tell you. <laughs> um, no, it would be it would be great um, for our um, uh, our viewers to understand a little bit more about what's involved, what their clients will um, enjoy when they um, come to the masterclass and and so on. So, can you uh, just share a bit more, please? Well. My colleague Vicky Bruce will talk to you more about the about what what we offer in a moment, but on the whiskey front, the the we do specialise in whiskey because of both of our connections in the in the industry, which allows us, if you like, private access to to distilleries and individuals within the industry. Um, it also provides us with a very deep knowledge of, of, of you know, where and what and so on to assist people who either who are, who are complete starters, who are, who are amateurs starting out on their journey of discovery or, um, or, or serious connoisseur professionals. Um, so the, the, the usually we would, I would usually like to start if it depends on the time that we've got, you know, if it's a very short trip or, or long trip, whatever. But we usually like to start with a sort of introductory tasting to exactly the sort of thing that I've been talking about, you know, how you go about so that before we take them out into the field to look at distilleries and whiskies, um, they have a kind of basis of how to go about uh, assessing quality, as well as having a good time. As I said, you know, drink, enjoy it as you like, you know, but, you know, if you want to appreciate it. So this is a basic introduction to the appreciation of whiskey. Um, uh, Vicky, through her family connections, has extraordinary um, good contacts in rather grand houses and castles in Scotland. And so these, as the week goes on, um, as well as going to distilleries, depending upon where they want to go, how much they want to spend, how many people there are, um, we can access you know, some lovely restaurants and places to stay, etc. And some of which are, 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 are you know, they're, they're private houses, quite frankly, mm. the, 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 some of them, um, depending. So, the, but I think that the, and at whatever level you want, if you want helicopters, Vicky can organize helicopters. I think you've got a private helicopter, Vicky, haven't you? The, uh, anyway, the, the, the uh, um, you know, chauffeur driven, it's all chauffeur driven. Um, but, you know, whether it's buses, because we can cope with, with, with up to, well, I, I'll, I'll hand over to you, Vicky, now. Um, in terms of numbers, because we obviously we can do small small groups. The, the smaller the groups are fine, but expensive. Um, up to about did you say about fifty? Vicky, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, um, we can we can take um, we can take larger groups. We tend to we tend to sort of stick to a group size of about between eight and ten people, six to twelve people. I don't know, give or take. Uh, depends what people want. Generally speaking, our whiskey groups aren't particularly um, particularly big, uh, but there's certainly an advantage in having a, 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 a optimum group size. Um, for an example, a lot of distilleries, for insurance purposes, can't take groups around of more than twelve people, and each distillery is different anyway. So they'll all have their their own set of of, of, sort of rules and regulations. So if we have larger groups, which doesn't happen that often, we will split them into two, which you know, some people don't like. So the optimum group size is sort of, oh, I'd say probably eight. It's quite a really good group size. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and but smaller or, or larger. So yes, I mean we can we we can certainly certainly manage. Um, and and um, just sort of some specific. I mean we've we've got three uh, distilleries here, but. There's a um, there's a, a wonderful selection and choice that um, that the clients can can go to, aren't there? 
Well, I think, yeah, I mean, if they, if they're pundits, if they, if they, if they, they know what they or they think they know, where they want to go, we can, we can, we can fix it, no problem. Um, the what people don't tend to realize. I mean, Scotland's a very small country, but it takes a hell of a long time to get from A, a to B, you know. So unless the, 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 the party wants to spend an awful lot of time in the car or in the bus, um, traveling from here and there, or unless they, unless they travel by helicopter, um, you know, you know, it's, it's, it, I mean, our experience is that it's, it's, it's pretty tiresome. So you're better to focus on um, a particular area of yeah. the country. I mean, Scotland is a staggeringly beautiful country, and the, apart from the midges and the, uh, <laughs> uh, and sometimes the weather, the weather's very changeable. So they always say that, of course, you can get, you can get four, four, four different seasons in a day, and so it'll, 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 it'll change, you know. But the uh, <clears throat> best to focus on, and again, a lot, a lot, a lot is to do with time and you know, how much time the, the group has got. Um, and then to do whatever the within, uh, let's say, the west coast, the the, the North Highlands, um, where you could do you could do Talisker on Sky, you could do Ardnamurchan on the Ardnamurchan Peninsula, you could do um, to Mori de Siri on the Isle of Mull. You know, this requires sort of little ferry crossings and things like that. Um, but the, the, you know, we know of some extremely nice places to stay, and. Um, so they, you know, again, it's to do it's to do with tailoring. So, so if they've got an idea of where they want to go, we will advise them how possible that is in the time available. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't know where they want to go, we will advise them um, what, to, what, what 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 you know. We have no we have no preferences. We have um, I, yeah, and we and we. I mean, quite frankly, our, our relations with. Um, Pretty well, all distilleries uh, are so good that the, um, the there's no preference to distilleries. I mean, obviously, we we all have our our personal favourites, um, but the just for one aesthetic reasons or for for sentimental reasons of having, um, in my case, having been there many times and and knowing the people well, but um, you know, we're we're not we're we're completely independent of brand, and so we 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 we're 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 not. Um, I mean, I know all the, the, the principles in, in the whiskey companies, and so, so we can get access. And well, that's the point, actually. We, we can actually get access, if required, to places which are not usually open to the general public. Um, um, so it's a, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very special offering. It can be from being a, um, you know, a, just a really good holiday, you know, with a lot of whiskey, um, which <laughs> makes a good holiday. Um, to a very specialized, um, uh, you know, for, for a, a group of people who are, are um, focused on whiskey. Um, it, frankly, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique offering. It's a unique mm, offering. Yeah, what do you say, Vicky? And that's, that's why, why we're a good partnership. I think, um, uh, you know, our, our clients look to us for um, either inspiration or knowledge or a combination of the two so um that's that's absolutely perfect and Great. Uh, good uh, we can we can certainly certainly provide provide that now uh, we've got a little bit of harry potter here and some rather, <laughs> some rather beautiful pictures can you just um just quickly uh uh talk us through what we're, what we're looking at because as you say scotland is just beautiful well i'll start off vicky this is the west highland line which so far we haven't used, have we? But it's a, it's a single track railway. It goes through the most unbelievably gorgeous country through the West Highlands. And this is the great um, bridge at Glenfinnan. Glenfinnan is where Bonnie Prince Charlie raised his standard um, for the 1745 rising. And this train um, was, was used as the Hogwarts Express. And so, People flock to see the um, the train, it's, and it's it, in the film. It, it's crossing the Glenfinnan Viaduct. Um, um, yeah. That the the uh, uh, the one below it is the Outer Islands. Um, Har this is probably Harris, I think. But look at the colour of the water. You know, 
I mean, even if the is grey, the 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 the, um, um, the waters. Look at that turquoise-coloured water. Yeah. Um, uh, the castle there, we don't know precisely. I think it's a West Coast castle. It may be Castle um, Moida. I, I want to call it Castle Chiram on Loch Moidart. Um, <clears throat> but there, frankly, there are so many ancient <laughs> castles in Scotland. The um, I was once told that the, the, I once wrote a little book about castles, as a matter of fact, and, the, uh, uh, and when I was doing my research, the, the, somebody said there are more, Scotland's a small country, there are more castles per square mile than any other place in the world. Most of them, <laughs> most of them derelict, and, but, the, the, yeah. uh, um, but the, it adds the romance to the country, you see. That's one of the great things that Scotland has, is this heartbreaking romantic history. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, and then below here is um, Loch Harport, where you can see Talisca Distillery on the on the on the right hand side, as you're looking at it. So oh, there we are. There's a few a, a few pips. Anything to add, Vicky? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I think uh, that was uh, that that was great. And um, Vicky, it would be great to understand a little bit more. Now, I do also need to. Um, say that um, Vicky, uh, her surname is Bruce, and she's descended from one of the kings of Scotland back in the um, uh, the beginning of the 14th century. Robert the Bruce was king of Scotland. I think I'm right for about 20 years or so, wasn't he? Maybe a bit, maybe a bit longer. So um, certainly some fabulous history that you can imagine uh, would be rather wonderful to sit and, and listen to over a glass of whiskey, probably. Um, but Vicky, for, for the purposes of, of this afternoon, it would um, just, just these are some of the um, experiences that uh, our clients could enjoy during a, um, a sort of three day visit um, to Scotland. Absolutely. And again, the same with, with all the, the tours, it depends on group sizes and how, many, how much time they have, whether they've been to Edinburgh before. Um, one of the things which we do starting with Edinburgh Castle is you can actually do Edinburgh Castle privately before it's open to the public. So that's one of the things that we do with groups uh, on a very regular basis. Um, so it's a, you know, it, guests don't necessarily appreciate it when they go into the castle and it's completely empty, but when they come back out having had breakfast and there are 10,000 people, <laughs> Yeah, that was quite cool. So we, we we try and do things like that, but obviously that's not you know, it's not necessary. Edinburgh is you know it's really at, at the moment it's it's quite extraordinary because it's it's like a, a ghost town and it's it's just incredible. But normally it is it is absolutely packed all year round. So we try and we try and book tours out so that we our guests have got a bit of space and a bit of a bit of um, you know comfort. Um, which is going to be even more uh, appropriate going forward with the social distancing that, you know, we're, yeah. we're out. so that's something that we do as, as, as standard anyway. Um, we walk them down the Royal Mile, which is uh, incredibly ancient. Um, underneath the, the city chambers, there is a street which dates back, Charlie might have to help me, it dates back to, I can't remember how, how old it is, but um, many... Four, 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 1300s, 1400s, I think, yeah. I'm going to say 12, 13, so yes, let's, let's oh. say 13, 13, um, which was part of the very, very original city, which the, the streets were very narrow and they were built up, up and up and up and up and up. And then eventually they built the Royal Mile on the top of these streets and they sealed them and they had to get all the residents out. Um, and there was one very obstreperous gentleman who took quite a long time to evict, but eventually they sealed off these streets and they were only reopened about, I think it was about 40 years ago. And, and, and these, all these houses and shops were as people had literally down tools and left. And they're really haunting. Some of them were, you know, a lot of them, well, they were all during, during the plague, there were people boarded up in, oh, it's just all a bit, anyway, the plague plays quite a big part. So we take people down there and see that. So that's fascinating. Um, Palace of Holyrood House is the Queen's official residence in Scotland. Royal Yacht Britannia is her erstwhile yacht, um, a private yacht, which is very, it's really quite sad because it was... Yeah, you know, very it was, sad. It was, it was a really, it is a very beautiful thing, but it's a very private thing. And 
And, you know, the queen's bedroom, for example, you know, they, and it's the same with all the bedrooms, they cut a big hole in the wall and put a window there so you can see into the queen's bedroom. And, and I just find it all a bit, yeah. a bit sad. But it's, it is an amazing thing. And actually, we do private dinners on, on the yachts, and that's very, very special. I think the private dinners, I certainly, uh, our clients have, have raved about though that side. I think the, the slightly voyeuristic bit, yes, is um, slightly uncomfortable. It is slightly uncomfortable, but it's still, you, it still has, even though, even though it was quite a relaxed place for the royal family to really be very private and, and sort of on their own, it has this, it has an extraordinary sense about it, a real, again, a feeling of sort of nostalgia and sort of history and romance. Um, but the private dinners are great fun. And then St Andrews is about an hour and a half from Edinburgh, so beautiful cathedral, golf course, and of course the beach from Chariots of Fire. Um, so every, well, it's a, it's a bit of a bucket list in Andrews for people. Um, people do love to go. Uh, and then heading north. So this is, we've, we've kind of done a, what, what people could do in three days, because quite often that's all we have people for, which is very difficult, because as Charlie said, logistically speaking, getting around Scotland is quite time consuming. So going north up the A9, we've got, I think there are about five distilleries, but they're great. They're really good distilleries. So I've just picked out Aberfeldy and Dalwini because they're, they're both very picturesque um, and give great guided tours. Um, and then the Jacobite Express, as Charlie said, the, the Harry Potter train, that's great if you're going, going to the West Coast. Um, and then you can go, you go to a little sea fishing village called Malig. And then from Malig, you get a little ferry which goes over to the Isle of Skye. So it's all really just very, very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then Skye is, is amazing. So what we would do in that situation is, is everybody's luggage and transport would just go and, and sort of meet them on Skye. So they get the train and then the ferry and then the, the, the transport's waiting for them at the other side. So it's all quite well coordinated. Um, there's lots to do on Sky. It actually takes quite a long time to, to get round Sky. Um, there's some beautiful, beautiful things to see. Um, so I've just popped the, the Talisco Distillery, the Kilt Rock and the Fairy Pools down, which is sort of the, 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 probably the better known things. Um, and then coming back, Island Donan Castle is, is the iconic castle that you see. Anytime you see a photograph of Scotland, it's probably Island Donan Castle. And it is one of the little bridge that goes out to it and it's sitting in the sea and it's just gorgeous. So coming back, you can see Island Donan and then you can go down through Glencoe, which doesn't matter what the weather is, Glencoe is absolutely extraordinary. It's, um, there are two places in Scotland that just are, um, I don't know what the word is, incredibly emotive and, and well, lots of places, but the two that stand out for me, one's Glencoe and the other's Culloden, where you just get this enormous sort of overwhelming feeling of sadness and sorrow and, um, and history. And, and wow. Glencoe kind of has the same feeling. And I actually think Glencoe is better in bad weather because you get this real drama and the, the tops of the mountains are sort of cra uh, in, in cloud and you know when when the battle of glencoe took place i think charlie i think it was february when it took place it was it wasn't so much a battle as a massacre, massacre rather, it? yeah the it was a, an awful thing the uh, 1689 wasn't it something like that mm. yeah yeah and you know the, the, it's a very harsh environment and you, when you go through that it's really it's really i think important to sort of try and reach back into the sort of annals of time and, and, and touch that because, you know, Scotland is, is so much a part of its history. It's it, yeah. you know, really, um, the people of Scotland, you know, for example, quite a lot of Scottish people don't like the English. <laughs> this is, and this is a very, very, very old grudge that we're still bearing. <laughs> but they, love, but they love Americans. <laughs> we love, we <laughs> um, absolutely but um there are some of us that love each other so so that's, no, that's we're all right. so, so happy to be working with you and you know it's, it's yeah it's, but there's a there's a great story that um the uh there was a football match england versus germany and if you think about how recently this always makes me laugh how recent was the was the second world war yeah. where people's mm. grandparents were killed in the Second World War. But the historic grudge against the English goes back hundreds of years. But there was a ferry company that gave free passage to anybody who could produce a German passport. For, for <laughs> 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 I was thrilled that the Germans had beaten the English in this <laughs> Well, I, 
being being a rugby fan, I was just absolutely devastated arriving at Murrayfield to watch. Um, um, I, well, no, I was in. I was up there um, anyway, and um, uh, to see the number of people who were supporting Italy because they were playing England, <laughs> and it's basically anybody who plays England, we're going to support you because yeah, that, uh, and it's it, really funny. The Scottish referendum wasn't for most people wasn't really based on economics or politics. It was just like yeah. oh, English, no, we don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yet we both love visiting each other's countries, which is, is bizarre. So that's um that's brilliant. Thanks, thanks, Vicky. It's um you know, as we as we say with um all of our um tea and training, whether you're visiting um Blenheim or Highclere or or Windsor, um all of these itineraries are are flexible and will be designed and created to to match what the clients want to do and and their interests and and so on so um it's not a case of cramming as much it as as we can in, in in the time it's it's really highlighting the 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 best bits so however long your your clients are north of the border they will have the absolute best best time possible and we will we will in, ensure that and they will stay in the very best uh, very best places vicky can you just briefly sort of talk about some of the um types of places where um where they may stay I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. And again, this, this depends very much on group size and budget. Um, this particular picture, so uh, Gordon is, is a friend of mine and a butler. He works quite often for the royal, well, he works for a lady who works for the royal family. It's a very complicated sort of story. So he does a lot of royal events. So he's, um, he's a very, very interesting person to talk to and a very, very fine butler indeed. Um, this particular castle is called Cander Craig and it used to belong to Billy Connolly. And before that, um, Anita, what's she called, Roddick, who oh, owned- Roddick, yeah, um, yeah, body shop. Yeah, and it's been, it's been all redone. So it's very, very comfortable and, and very beautiful. Um, and that's a, that's a real favorite for us because the guests get there and there's a piper on arrival and Gordon the butler with you know a silver salver of, of whiskey and they just kind of really relax because it's very it's you know where, even when you're in a hotel lovely though that is you've still got to keep your game face on because there are other people around you but when you go into a private place that but, but you are being looked after so you get that benefit that you would get in a hotel of having you yeah. know everyone call um but people really do unwind and on the other side of that fireplace is another beautiful room, which is the whiskey library. And it's got 12 bedrooms and we bring a chef in. And again, you know, going forward in the whole sort of social distancing thing, we're expecting to see a lot more interest in these private exclusive use properties where we are very much in control as to who, you know, from, from the, including the transport. And if we're going on tours, then we're booking the tours out. We're going into these, we have our staff tested. We can keep that really quite tightly controlled, um, but you know we work with a huge range of of, um, of of accommodation, and you know we've got some really fantastic, very secret little sort of little log cabins and things like that for 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 smaller, well, for couples mainly. Um, yeah. And then obviously we work with hotels. Glen Eagles probably being the better known in Verlocchio, yeah. Scotland's best hotels. You know we're we're spoiled for choice. Yeah. It, it is wonderful. I mean, there is, is something for, ev for every taste and, and, and request, isn't there? So um, that, uh, that log fire looks just really rather lovely, doesn't <laughs> it? It's just, it's just a, a, absolutely perfect. And then just to um, finish off with some yet more beautiful scenery of, of Scotland. Yes, um, St Andrew's Cathedral uh, on the left. Um, which is often overlooked because people go to St Andrews really to play golf, but there's a lot they can do in St Andrews. It's a really pretty little town. Um, uh, one of the more popular things for people to do in St Andrews is to go to the cafe for, where William and Kate went on their first date. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> It's a very humble cafe who are doing extremely well <laughs> out of the fact that William went on his first date with Kate there. Um, so, you know, and again, this is, it's, it's really important, I think, when you're, when you're traveling to have insider knowledge, and that applies to all of us wherever we go. Yeah. You can do yeah. the tourist trail, but 
you know, it's really nice to have sort of little hidden bits and pieces. And on the other side of the cathedral, you go down, and, uh, which tourists don't tend to do. It's a beautiful little harbour back, you know, right down there. And we can take people around by boat. We do, you know, we do sort of, um, if you can go up the coast um, and, and, well, you can go quite a lot of places from St Andrews because it's quite centrally located. But yeah, we can take people around by boat, so that's nice. But not many people do that, uh, which is strange because we are an island after all. Uh, and then on the right, that's Kilt Rock, which is uh, on Sky, and that is great fun because when there's a, I can't remember Charlie, will probably know because Charlie's a sea a seafaring mariner. Uh, when there's a certain wind, that <laughs> that waterfall flows up the way. Yeah, you know, yeah. Water's going down, obviously, but the wind hits the outer water and pushes it up. And it's the most wow. extraordinary thing to look at. Is you, you can Google it, sort of the kilt rock going, it's it that goes, goes uphill, but only on a very strong wind going in that direction, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is one of the many West Coast beaches. Um, the, you know, we're known for the very, very white sands on the West Coast, which gives us incredible sort of Seychelles blue water. It's it really does, yeah. The Seychelles, but it's very pretty. Um, <laughs> and then that's the, the last picture is the Palace of Holyrood House, the Queen's, Queen's House in Scotland. Official residence, yeah. Just, just be. I mean, there is, there is just absolutely everything there, isn't there? Yeah. Well, a huge thank you, and um, I hope you have enjoyed our little uh, tour through um, some of the distilleries and um, and things to do. So, um, Lisa will um, unmute you, and so please do. Um, ask any questions or pop them into the chat room, anything like that, and uh, we're happy to um, happy to answer. Is there anything? We've had a chat come through. Um, so we've just got some people asking about um, experiences at New Year's Eve um, because that's quite a big thing and very traditional in Edinburgh. Yeah. Vicky, can I hand that over to you? Yeah, um, we're not sure if it's going to go ahead. In fact, I don't think it is going ahead this year. But for next year, um, yeah, May in Scotland is something is something very very special. It's uh, we make a big. In fact, up until not that long ago, Christmas wasn't celebrated um, in Scotland really at all. Yeah. It, was, it was just Hogmanay. In fact, I think it wasn't even a holiday until about 1972. Yeah, people used to work on Christmas morning. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. It was really. I think it was in the seventies. It was made a. It was made a holiday. Oops. <laughs> um, so uh, Hogmanay has always been the the huge one. So for us, so it's it's celebrated well in Edinburgh. There is you know the most epic celebration. You need yeah. to get the tickets to get in, and it's very very tightly controlled. Uh, it's brilliant fun, amazing music, incredible fireworks. It's just er everything you could want. Um, and then, but, but I think it's personally for me, I'm not a huge party animal, so I prefer the kind of the castle on the West Coast with a roaring fire and a glass of whiskey. That's, that's much more up my street. And some fabulous food, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds, sounds That's just brilliant, that's bliss. Absolutely, wonderful. Um, and another one similar um, in a relating note, um, that if, they, if guests visit um, other times of year, so not necessarily um, at New Year's Eve, whether um, they can participate in any sort of Cayley events um, and dances or experiences like that. Yeah, and actually with our, with our, our groups going up from, I mean, even from six people, we, can, we lay that on on a regular basis. We, we put that on for them. It's very easy to do. Um, we need a few people because Scottish country dancing is, it, it looks, it's actually quite, quite straightforward and quite geometric, but it looks quite complicated. So um, that's something that we do with people all the time. And it's great fun. It's a really good form of exercise. It's a bit, a bit I guess, <laughs> it's like line dancing. You get a bit, bit of a sweat on. Um, <laughs> I used to do it actually. <laughs> Did you? It's, yeah. it's a really good form of exercise, and it's and it's a it's a huge laugh, and you you know you do sleep well afterwards. So yeah, Kay Kaylee dancing, Scottish country dancing is great fun. Um, the other thing which I always think is a little bit on the cheesy side, but guests absolutely love, is we do mini Highland games, and I mean. Oh. It's, mm. It is so funny, and and particularly our American guests are particularly um, good sports. There's things like um, they have a, 
a bag full of hay and you've got a pitch fork for, and you've got to like stab the hay and see who can throw it the furthest and there's tossing the welly, tossing the caber, tossing the haggis, a lot of, a lot of chucking stuff. Um, and it's just such a laugh. Um, but yeah, there's always, always a prize of a bottle of whiskey for them, <laughs> the, the winning team. Well, it's rude not to, absolutely, yeah. But this is what's so wonderful though about sharing um, okay, a variety of our old traditions, and and it's yeah, it's it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, uh, Sam, I, I would I would also say that kilts can be provided. You can have a full, <laughs> full, full dress kilt for a dress dinner. If, if we, we 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 do that quite often actually. Um, well, we will most definitely include that in any itinerary that we send, <laughs> Charlie. That's perfect because I I think they should, shouldn't they? Really. Well, why not? Yeah. Absolutely. Kilts, the kilts can be organised. The gentlemen are always slightly, slightly sheepish about this and, and feel, you know, it's a skirt and, um, and, and then they put the kilt on and it's always on backwards, so the butler always helps them put it on the right way around. <laughs> and then it comes out and then there's a bit of, and I'm like, oh, this is quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ladies all go, oh, you look great. And then they're like, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, always a huge success <laughs> People fantastic love. oh that's that's wonderful well we do i mean we arrange outfits for royal ascot for game yeah. shooting and for yeah, everything cool. else so why not um you know mm. why not kilts i think that's wonderful and um debbie um uh has asked um that if there's the possibility of doing gin and whiskey tasting Absolutely. The, a former colleague of mine, uh, Geraldine Coates, is, is known as Madam Gin. So she's <laughs> like one of the world experts on gin. And she, she lives in Edinburgh and um, would be more than happy to, to, to do gin tastings and gin talks if, if, uh, if, if, if required. No problem at all. Perfect. So Debbie, you, uh, you have your answer. They can do, they can do both, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I think, unless Lisa, have you had any more questions coming in? No. Nope. Um, well, a huge thank you, uh, Vicky and Charlie. That has been uh, just, just wonderful. And a huge thank you to all of you for, um, for joining us this, this Friday. I hope you've enjoyed it, um, enjoyed it too. And maybe, seeing as we all have a bank holiday weekend, um, you might just sample a, a glass or two of whiskey and just, uh, <laughs> just experience a little bit of what Charlie's been talking about and then we can we can hear back from you. So um, just wonderful. Now we are taking a break on Monday because we all have a, a bank holiday. Um, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Todd, for your, your lovely comments and, and Debbie. Um, but on uh, Wednesday, we are visiting one of our favorite manor houses, um, Chavenage House, which is down in the Cotswolds. And um, we'll, it's, it's one of the homes of Paul Dark, um, but it has the most wonderful history. So we look forward to, uh, to sharing that with you on Wednesday. So wishing you a wonderful weekend. Have a lovely long weekend. I think we've probably all deserved it. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much for coming and thank you again, Vicky and Charlie. It was just wonderful to see you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.